Evening all. Just getting ourselves organised again for another Ripper episode. G'day Richard. Jenko's Gold Adventures. Howdy Rob. Lots and lots uh, on again this evening. Very warm uh, here in Bendigo. A little bit warm for being out in the bush, but you get out early, you're usually okay. G'day Alan. G'day Jamie. Howdy Daniel. Wayne. Malcolm, lots and lots of people coming on board. Wendy's on board as well. Clem. Just uh, about organised. Won't be too long until we'll be able to kick the show off. So Zoran. Lots and lots of people coming into the feed now. Just uh, putting the finishing touches on. G'day Mr Coffee Bush Kid. Jace, Aaron, John. Lots of stuff uh, coming through. Just about getting organised to be there soon. G'day, Glenn. Karen, Fred, welcome. G'day, Mick. Josh, Joel. All right, well, I uh, think we're uh, nearly ready to hit the show off. I'll be back with you in a moment or two. Welcome to the Mind Lab Show, Australia's most informative prospecting live stream. This is the place where you'll get all the tips, tricks and super deals for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. In this episode, Beachy Bruce will show us how to wash down our detectors after a day at the beach. The Coffee Bush Kid and Treasure Tim are back in an episode of What Have I Found? We'll continue to hunt for gold in the Pilbara in an episode of Detecting with Dave and I'll answer your questions live. And of course, We've got a great giveaways for some fantastic kit to help you in the great outdoors. I'm Gold Digger Dave, let's get digging. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. That signal's so sweet when I hear that beep beep, couldn't think of many things better. There's nothing like the sound of gold under the coil when I'm out there swinging my detector. All right, well, look, we're going to uh, kick off uh, straight away with some news, uh, breaking news. Uh, look, after a very successful 2022, Miners Den Australia is on the expansion program with a new store opening in Brookvale on Sydney's northern beaches. Now it's got all the gear for the fit out is being organised and we're expecting to start welcoming customers in early February. This will give uh, Sydney customers another uh, MindLab Miner's Den metal detector superstore and it will make it easier for you to get all the gear you need for your next gold prospecting or treasure hunting adventure. So we'll have a little bit more on that to come up over the next week or two. But I'm heading up there Sunday to uh, start to fit that out. And it's going to be a, a great little store. It's not as big as our Penrith store, uh, but we think it's going to be highly successful as per usual. So it's in Brookvale. It's on the northern beaches. Uh, it'll give an option to the people on the northern side of Sydney to uh, get the best service in the land when it comes to mine lab metal detectors. Now let's have a look uh, next at the gold and silver prices and how they've been trending over the last uh, 30 days or so. First to uh, gold and let's uh, look at how it has gone. Uh, as you can see currently the precious metal is uh, sitting at uh, a very impressive $2,715 per troy ounce. I think that's uh, around about where it's still sitting right as I speak. Now this is a sharp increase on its uh, last low of $2,630 in mid-December. Let's hope the upward trend continues into 2023 as more investors look to put their money into a relatively safe haven. On to the gold, on the silver, sorry now. Um, again, looking at the uh, last uh, 30 days or so, we can see that it's uh, sitting at $34.73 uh, $33, $34 per 
per troy ounce. That uh, may not seem like a lot uh, to write home about, uh, but when you compare it to what it was, say, three months ago at a lower 26, that's a considerable improvement for those investing in the silver medal. As always, we'll be uh, keeping an eye on both the gold and silver prices as the year progresses, and make sure you are updated right here on the Mine Lab Show. Now look, uh, if we move on sticks to our events calendar, and uh, we're up and running uh, for 2023, uh, and the year started off at a blistering pace. Our event schedule uh, kicks, if, kicks off in February in Adelaide, and the first one up is the Let's Go Caravan and Camping uh, show at Adelaide, South Australia. That's on the 19th to the sorry, the 15th to the 19th of February at the Adelaide Showgrounds. Uh, there's also then after that the Victorian Caravan and Camping Touring Show. That's on at the Melbourne Showgrounds. That's the 22nd to the 26th of February. And moving into uh, early March, well, Great Outdoors and 4x4 Expo at Mornington, and that's at the Mornington Racecourse, 10 to 13th of uh, March 2023. We're also going to have some smashing deals at those shows, so um, please pop in and see us if you're around those areas. We'll do you a great deal. And uh, if you're looking for some of the Equinox machines, we may even have some manacores uh, starting to be available on the shelf by then, and uh, we'll certainly run you through the basics on those if you come and get one from us at the show. Uh, March also is going to see the first of our uh, Miner's Den Mine Lab Metal Detector Demo Days. And these are kicking off very shortly. We'll put the dates up next week for those. So if you're looking at getting a machine, these things are fantastic. They go through what's available in the range of Mine Lab machines. They'll tell you what it's used for, its price points, those kind of things. It's not a training session, so it's not designed for people who got a detector. It's more designed uh, for me to have a chat to you about what's available so you can make a well an informed decision on which uh, metal detector from the Mine Lab range will suit your needs. Now, the Australian Gold Prospectors Expo, this is a big one, and we attend a huge number of events throughout the year, and this one is, just keeps getting bigger. This year, it is on Saturday the 15th of uh, April and Sunday the 16th of April 2023. Um, it's on at the Bendigo Showgrounds, and Miner's Den is again a major sponsor. This year's event will have a new website that we're just working on at the moment. There'll be some new events and a large range of gold prospecting stalls, stalls and information. We'll throw in a seminar or two about gold, all things gold, prospecting and coin and relic hunting, as well as some fantastic giveaways. And look, it'll make it a weekend to remember if you're in the gold prospecting or treasure hunting fraternities. There will of course be uh, all the major players from industry in attendance and some super deals from the exhibitors. Be sure to save the date and uh, when we have more information we'll let you know very shortly and uh, we'll let you know once we get the website up also. There's also a Facebook page up there as well. I'll put all those details up uh, on next week's show. All right, well, moving right along from the news, a little bit happening there, but now we're on to our viewer giveaway. And I've got a few items uh, to give away tonight. And this one should be uh, in every prospector or treasure hunter's kit bag during the warmer months. I'm talking about the Miner's Den snake bite kit, and I've got six of them to give away tonight. So there's going to be uh, three, obviously, for our YouTube viewers and three for our Facebook friends. Now, to be one of the lucky viewers to take home this potentially life-saving bit of gear, all you need to do is to comment in the feed. It's that easy. Good luck and happy prospecting. I'll uh, announce the winners later in the show. Uh, talking of warmer months, Beachy Bruce from our Adelaide store has put together a few helpful tips on covering up when out in the hot Australian sun. Let's take a look at that one now. G'day ladies and gentlemen, a very squinty Beachy Bruce here for the Mine Lab show. You guessed it, this one's going to be about sun protection. We all spend a fair bit of time out in the Australian sun and she's pretty harsh when she wants to be, so looking after yourself is pretty important. I spend many hours on the beach during the peak of the sun times, so it's pretty important for me to make sure I'm covered. And this is what I personally recommend. Start off with long sleeve shirt. It can be one of the light materials, like the ones which are uh, for fishing, or we have some seismic ones which we use. They're a good brand as well. But one thing you want to make sure is that you've got a good size collar. And the reason why is because we use a head gaiter or a neck gaiter with that as well. So I'll show you that right now. So all you need to do is pull your collar up and lock it in. Get your head gaiter. 
over the top, go to the outside. Bye everybody. Go to the outside, pull it down. That now is sealed all the way around with that collar on the inside of it. You can leave it, wear it how you wish. Like this is probably fine. While I'm out for a long period of time and I've got the rest of my gear on, I actually pull it right up, bring it up over the top of my head. And now when I have my sunglasses on, which I'll grab now, so now I add my sunglasses. These are prescription sunnies. Make sure your sunglasses are good quality. On go the sunnies. In comes the broad rim hat over the top. I'm now virtually fully covered from the sun. And while I do a lot of beach working, I get a lot of glare that comes back up off of the water and that reflects and seriously burns my cheeks and my ears. So another really good idea for Australian conditions and for while you're out doing long hunts is wearing a bladder backpack. Three litres of water can mean the difference between you having a bit of a meltdown on the beach and needing some help or being fully hydrated for the whole day. I usually, my sessions usually go for about five hours and I find three litres is pretty appropriate for that. These units can be picked up pretty cheap these days, so there's not really too much excuse to dry yourself out underneath the harsh Aussie sun. I do recommend one of the bladder packs that actually has the cross brace across the front because at certain times, if you're like me, you go out into the deeper water and you certainly don't want this floating up and getting tangled around your head. I generally wear shorts while I'm hunting, which means that I'll generally take in the backpack a little tube of SPS 50 plus. I'll apply before I head off to go down hunting to my legs to make sure I've got some sun protection. And then during the day, if I get too hot or sweaty or I uh, feel as though I, I'm down there for a long period of time, I will reapply and make sure that I don't get burnt. While out hunting as well, I like to wear either my sketches which are these guys. They're just a, a relatively cheap fabric material and actually legitimately sketches. Uh, I find these nice and flexible. I can use them on the dry. I can use them in the wet. Uh, I dry them out each time I use them, give them a rinse and they've lasted quite well. Uh, I also sometimes, if it's uh, cooler weather, will use something like a wetsuit booty, but I make sure they have a hard solid sole on them. That way then when you're walking through in some of these areas, you're less likely to get stabbed by either something sharp and rusty or pieces of glass uh, or even treading on a stingray or something like that. Anyway, so this has been a top tip about sun protection for the Mine Lab Show. I'll see you all next time. All right, well, thanks Beachy Bruce uh, for some good advice for the golden treasure hunters out there in the heat. Um, on to our gold discoveries now, and this week we have a story that comes from Carissa who writes, Whilst detecting around Rushworth area, Glenn and I found a great little patch. We found 32 pieces that we dug and a further 25 pieces out of, a speci out of species. We ran our detectors on the lowest setting and listened for the slightest break in the frequency. I went over someone else's hole and heard a faint target and uh, after digging down a little bit, uh, pulled out, uh, but did a bit further, I pulled out a specie that had gold running all through it. We dug a lot of uh, lead as well, but it was worth it for the gold we were finding. It was such a hot weekend that we were only able to detect for a short time in the morning and uh, we're looking forward to going back and exploring this area a little more. Now certainly that was a nice little hoard of gold uh, found there by Carissa and Glenn. We also have a very short, uh, and it is very, very short, it's only a few seconds here, uh, video of the, that specie that uh, Carissa found. Out today, Carissa found a beautiful specie with gold all the way through the top of it there. You can see the size of the specie with my hand. It's making an absolute racket. All right, well, uh, thank you, Carissa and Glenn, for your story. Don't forget, we're always looking for discovery stories, uh, gold discovery stories from our viewers here at the Mind Lab Show. And like Carissa and Glenn, you could win yourself a $25 gift voucher to spend at the miner's den for your troubles. Just head over to our website and click on the competitions link to get started. 
Now look, it's time for me to uh, head back out uh, to the Pilbara as we hit day 10 of my WA Outback prospecting adventure in the latest episode of Detecting with Dave. Let's see if we uncovered some gold this time. All right, guys, we're uh, back out again. We've actually come onto a pushed area. I've been using the Nugget Finder uh, 12 by seven coil, and this is where it really does come into its own. We've all dug some little bits of gold this morning. Uh, I think it's day 10 of our adventure or something like that. We're all starting to lose a little bit track of time uh, being out here. We haven't been into town for a few days now. Plenty of grub left and water, and plenty of gold coming out. I'm gonna just take you through this one here using the Nugget Finder 12 by seven. That's the uh, Exceed coil. I'm coming in here, we've got a bit of a target. With the actual elliptical shape of the coil, I'm actually able to get this right in underneath the spin effects here. So I'm going to clear a bit of that spin effects away for us. Um, there's a little bit of uh, sticks and stuff here that uh, won't be here in a few moments. Just clear out some of these spin effects. Don't need to take all of it out, but removing that like that and uh, just coming back in again. I'll scrape a little bit off there, it's nice and flat now. Come back in and have a listen again in the same area. Quite a nice little sound there. Hopefully this one's gonna be gold. We'll scrape him back. Flatten it off a little bit there. Okay, it's fairly close to the surface, which may not be a good sign. We have been getting some little bits of wire here. But you never know. Let's just uh, get out our trusty green scoop again and have a bit of a look down here and see what we've got. Have it in the actual scoop there now. Still got him there. Nothing on that one. Uh-oh. I think I can already see it in my hand here. I'm gonna come in and have a close look. You can just see it amongst the dirt there. There is an absolute tiny bit of gold sitting in there. Just shining up. Well, tiny, not really, actually, when I have a bit more of a look at it. Just pull that one out. That's another little nuggy. That is just sitting on top of the ground. The reason we've got this is because we're using the elliptical shape in the coil to, in the Nugget Finder 12 by 7 exceed coil and we can poke in underneath this scrubby stuff. Look at that there guys, one more little nuggy out of uh, an area that has been worked previously with our um, uh, some pushing and things. So the 6000, the exceed coil, underneath the uh, spin effects, gold still coming out. Um, let's have a look at another one or two that I've got marked here. You're going to have to excuse the wind out here, it's uh, picked up a little bit, which has made conditions a lot more pleasant than what it's been over the last few days. We're out here on our WA Pilbara Prospecting Adventure, working over some uh, ground that's actually been dozed with the 6,000s. Uh, I'm up to a uh, hand, well, almost up to a dozen pieces. Nathan's got quite a few as well. Dominic's picked up some gold, and we've got another target, not 10 feet from where I was previously. So it's quite a solid sound there. I'm gonna put the detector down. I'll scrape this back a little bit this way. Scrape him out there. Okay, let's have another listen with our detector. Okay, we've got it out of the ground now. And it is incredibly small, this absolutely tiny piece of wire. I can't actually believe that that was the target there. You can see it there just on the edge of my finger. One tiny little bit of wire, unfortunately not gold, but uh, we've been getting a few like that. And you can almost see it blowing in the wind there. Now look, I suspected that I probably hadn't got the target that I was actually looking for. I'm going to come back and I just checked over the area that we dug out again. That certainly sounds like a bigger target and I'm sure it wasn't just that little piece of uh, wire that I got. So it goes to pay just to recheck your hole 
and we'll just scoop up this and have a listen. Nothing there. Still nothing. Now it could just be another bit of wire. But it certainly sounds a little, a little more like the target than I thought I got originally. Still going there. Now I can't be sure we've got anything yet. But I reckon we have got either a piece of rubbish just here, which is a little bit bigger bit of wire. I think I've just knocked it in. That sounds much more the type of sound that I was getting originally. So here it is again. This is a little bit different, this one here. A little piece of wire. I've just picked up one of the little flecks off the wire before. Another target in the ground there. It pays to recheck your hole after you've, uh, well, got what I thought was probably a little faint for the signal that we got off. It's just proved correct. A uh, little piece of rubbish, one piece of gold. Let's have a look at the next target. Still very pleased that it's in the ground. Let's just take a bit more out there. Back it comes. Okay, that's got him out of the ground now. Still nothing yet. And yes, unfortunately, this time we've scored another tiny piece of wire absolutely sounding off there it's probably going to blow away in the wind it said it just did um, nice tiny little bit of wire we've scored there unfortunately no gold that time but we're going to continue doing some detecting if we get on to some more little pieces we'll come back and show you what we've found later in the day i'm gold digger dave for the mine lab show Okay, well, that was uh, great fun out there in WA, and we've still got some more to come. There's some of the best days uh, are yet to come as we uh, start to round out our trip to the Pilbara region of WA. Let's move right along now. I'm just going to check out our super deals that we're continuing this month. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start with a new bundle that uh, is just in time for this summer season. I've bundled together our premium snake bite kit and our snake guards all into one bundle. And I think you're saving around about 15, 16 bucks. I think it's a little bit cheaper than what I've actually got up on the screen there. It's actually $129.95. So that'll mean you're saving about $16.95 on that bundle. Um, I'll have a little look at these products a little later in the show uh, on the product spotlight. Um, now, of course, we've got our GPZ 6000 package. Uh, it's coming with all the standard kit, plus miners down to throwing in a control box cover um, and a pro swing harness for just $1 extra. That saves you $214 for 7000 Again, all the standard gear, plus the miners down to throwing in a spare battery and MineLab carry bag for just $1 extra. So you bank uh, about $340 odd dollars worth of savings there. Uh, 9799 uh, or 10799 with the, uh, with the uh, uh, bonus goodies thrown in as well there as well. Also, MineLab SDC 2300. This is a ripper deal for the best mid-range gold prospecting unit on the market. You get all the standard kit, plus you get a minus den patch lead. Uh, you're getting a spare battery. You're also going to get in there uh, a couple other bits and pieces there. Uh, the ProSonic wireless unit. Uh, so all up, uh, I think you're saving around about the uh, uh, $1,100 mark on, on that unit at the moment. The 800, the MineLab Equinox 800, we've reduced the price on that down to $1,199. That's saving you a couple of hundred dollars. Sand scoop offer, so buy any Vanquish Equinox or Manticore units and get a free red sand scoop uh, thrown in for nothing. Uh, to see any of our bundle deals, simply head to minersden.com.au Search bundles. There are many other products that have been bundled together to save you some uh, coin as well. Uh, these include Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt and Pan, as well as options uh, with our Pay Dirt and the Pro MineLab Pro Gold Panning Kit. Uh, there's an SDC 2300 upgrade pack that uh, contains a lithium battery charger, armrest, knuckle protector, and the, the latest headphones uh, for the 
SDC 2300. They've actually got a connector on, and it means that uh, if you pull a cable, you'll actually uh, pull a cord out and not break the cable. So there's a few dollars, 33, 34 dollars worth of savings there. Um, and I've also uh, got the uh, battery speaker that I'm wearing once again here. Uh, that's been bundled up with our um, uh, wireless unit or wireless kit. So if you're using it on machines other than the SDC, there's a couple other machines that works for it other than, sorry, the GPX 6000. There's a couple of other machines it will also work on. Uh, otherwise, you'll need to have the uh, wireless kit as well. And this thing really is good, as I've shown you all before. Has our nice little headphones here, so you can pull those out. Drop the earbuds in, and you can wear a uh, wide-brimmed hat, unlike this, and not have any effect. If you just want to have a cooler, you've got speakers in both sides here. You get around about uh, 12, 15 hours out of a fully charged uh, kit with that. So that's on a bundle offer as well there. So check that out for the hotter months. Now, look, we've saved you, now we've saved you a bundle. Let's uh, head back to Beachy Bruce uh, with a quick tip uh, for those hunting treasure on the beach. Let's see what he's got to say now. G'day, ladies and gentlemen. Beachy here with a quick tip for the Mine Lab show. After you finish using your machine down the beach, it's going to have sand and quite potentially salt water all over it. They're both going to impact the machine negatively, so cleaning your machine regularly is really important. Quite frequently there are showers that are down the beach there, so you can rinse it off before you even get into the car and don't have to worry about it. First thing to do is to loosen all of the sections of the machine. So the coil ears, that needs to be loosened off. The collars for the shaft need to be loosened off. Make sure that your headphone jack and your coil connection are firm. And just undo the Velcro of your armrest. With the water on, but not full pelt, you don't want to hit a machine with a massive jet of water. It's just a gentle running flush. Put the coil underneath. Move the coil backwards and forwards. That'll help the sand drain out while it's under the flow of the water. Same with the collars and the locator buttons that are on the underside. Press those and twist them a few times. That will help flush that out. When you get to the control box, make sure that you rinse out the speaker area. Once again, not with high pressure water, just a gentle flow of water is fine. And the Velcro at the end and the screw underneath. Now your machine is rinsed and fairly clean. You can then dry it off, pack it away. Once a month, twice a month, depending on how often you use your machine down the beach, I use mine a lot. I like to actually go over the entire machine, disassemble everything, give it a really decent clean, let it dry, and then reassemble. That keeps my machine in tip-top condition. I'm Beachy, and this has been a quick tip for the Mine Lab Show. Have a good day. All right, well, uh, that's another great tip there. Thanks for your uh, contributions there, uh, Beachy Bruce. If you want to catch up with Beachy Bruce, if you've got any questions about uh, coin and treasure hunting, especially in the water, drop in and see him at our Adelaide store in uh, Mile End South, number 29, Sir Donald Bradman Drive. Now, look at competitions and giveaways just keep coming here on the Mine Lab Show. And we're going to start by congratulating our December Pay Dirt winner, Steve Hunter. I'm sure Corey has sent you out a voucher there. Um, and there's a couple of little pieces of gold he found there, as well as uh, looks like a token he scored it, uh, out of the uh, 950 bag of Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. So a couple of other entries for our January uh, Pay Dirt photo competition. Here's one from Mika who uh, panned off 31.3 grams of gold from his one ounce bucket of Gourmet Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt, along with a minus 10 token. Hope you had a heap of fun with that, Mika, and uncovering a very nice pile of gold there. And next we've got uh, an entry from Jason who scored four nuggets from his 700 gram bag of gourmet pay dirt. Thanks for the entry and best of luck in this month's competition. Now with the price of gold going up, I've actually priced out these uh, bags uh, a little while ago and they are representing extreme value now with um, uh, the price of gold going up. Uh, your ounce of gold uh, that you get out of our ounce bucket at 2999 you're only paying around about, uh, you're getting $2,715 worth of gold. Uh, it's not much for the uh, dirt and all the fun that you'll have out of our white bucket. So uh, it's a great time to get on to those now. Now look, how do you enter into this uh, uh, pay dirt competition? Very, very easy. Buy any bag, tub or bucket of Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt and take a photo of your finds including any redeemable collectible tokens. Then. 
just post it to our pinned post on the Miners Den Australia Facebook page. That's it. You're in with a chance to win again with Australia's richest pay dirt, Gold Digger Dave's Gourmet Pay Dirt. As I keep telling everybody, it's no ordinary gravel. Now look, don't forget we're also running a gold discoveries competition. We had a fantastic gold story uh, earlier from uh, Carissa and Glenn, as you saw. And uh, the entries are just pouring in with those. So look, congratulations, uh, a 25 buck voucher there for you guys. And uh, the last competition we have is the coin and treasure discoveries. And this one works exactly the same as the gold discoveries. Simply tell us about a recent find you had with your MindLab coin and relic detector and uh, the story that goes with it. Upload it to minusden.com.au and you're in the running to take away a $25 Miners Den gift card. The links to all these competitions are in the feed or at minusden.com.au. Now good luck uh, and I look forward to sharing your finds uh, with the MindLab community on a future episode of the MindLab show. Next up, the Coffee Bush Kid is back with a top tip on looking after those precious old coins once you have dug them up. Let's see what he has to say now. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid and today we're going to talk about coin storage. Some of the, some of the do's, some of the don'ts and what I do with my coins. So let's have a look. Some people when they get coins will just put them in a tin and they don't worry about it too much. They put their silvers in with their coppers and they're in all sorts of conditions. And if you've got reasonable coins, that is potentially not the thing to do. Like at the end of the day, they're your coins, you do with them what, they, what you want to. Some people uh, advise you never to clean a coin. Some people like to have bright and shiny coins, especially if they're silvers in their collections. So everyone's different. All I say at the start is if you can check what your coin is as to whether it's valuable. Like, you know, if you've happened to pick up a 1930 penny, yeah, don't put it in with all the rest of the stuff. Uh, but you know, if the coins are only worth a couple of bucks or maybe not even that, choice is yours, whatever you do with it, it doesn't really matter. But we're gonna see what I do with them. Now, I've brought in my copper coins in my book. We did weigh 3.7 kilos of coppers. And these, I've got them in the, I've got them in a binder, I've got them in the plastic, uh, sleeves, the coin sleeves. I myself have gone from George the Third, so these you might be able to see are the old cartwheel pennies and so forth. It's a nice way of keeping them separate; they don't get scratched with each other. And I've got them running through the Monarchs all the way through, and you can get pages for them. And you can see here what I've done is I've just put the dates in behind the pockets so that when I get the coins, in fact, I can show you a better one in a couple of spots. There we go, look, that's, that's really nice. I can look there and I can see whether I don't have the coin or if I do have the coin. And this is all my Vicky stuff. So you know, I've got them running in pennies and half pennies all the way through with that. I have a separate book for my silvers because silvers will get tarnished very quickly if you store them with a copper coin. So I keep my silvers away from my coppers. And this is just a nice, easy way of doing it. This is all out of the ground stuff. Uh, but by the same token, if you were buying them or you were given some, the plastic uh, sleeves are a nice way of storing them. They're in a book, you can take them everywhere. You say, oh, have a look at what I've got here. And people can have a look and ooh and ah all over it. And it's quite good. Another way of looking after your coins is in spec oh, specific coin containers. Now these, these are round ones and they've got little foam discs that you can keep taking out so that the coin fits in there perfectly. You can either put them on top as this one has. You can see the back hasn't been taken out at all. So that's on top. Uh, this one, which is a buffalo dime, uh, buffalo nickel that I was given, you can see one side of it, 
And then because they've taken it out and it fits nicely, you can see the other side. So this coin can be handled by all and sundry kids with bloody ice cream fingers and everything like that and it won't damage the coin. So that's another way of storing your coin. Another one again is in these cardboard sealed units. Now this is the Richard the third hammered coin that I got over at Detectable when we were over in the UK. The museum sent it back like that for me. So this is a, as I say, it's a cardboard uh, frame with plastic uh, faces on it. You can see one side, you can see the other side. And they are a nice little way of storing stuff. You could put them into little boxes or whatever. I think that's how they use them as catalog stuff. So that's another option. What you have to look out for uh, in your coin, especially your copper coins, is what we refer to as copper cancer. This is when, and I hope that we can see it, especially with this one here, see the little green dots of, I suppose it's copper oxide forming. It bubbles up, it creates a green dust. It will eventually, as we can see on this one, start to dust up and go over the whole coin. It spreads, which is why, of course, they call it copper cancer. Now, this is bubbled you, where my finger is. You might be able to see. It's bubbling, it's green, it's powdery. That will eventually cover the whole coin. It will also cover any of the coins that you have stored with it. So, if we've got the tin scenario or a, a box or whatever and all the coins are stacked on top of one another this cancer will spread and it will go through your whole coin collection and once they've got it they've pretty well got it and you can't really do anything about it and it can spoil a really good collection so that is a good reason why you should actually store your coins separately they first off won't get the copper cancer from other ones they won't scratch and you can keep their tarnishness to a, a, a lesser degree. If the air's around them, they get oxygenated, they will tarnish over time. If they're in a container or sealed units, there's no air in there or very little, and they will be cleaner, if you like, longer. So there we go, a multitude of ways of how to store your coins. We've sort of mostly talked of coppers, same thing will apply with silvers. So, again, you've got your, your binder with your sleeves that you can insert the coins into separately. We've got the round containers that you can either see one side or both sides with. We've got the little cardboard ones that, like the museum obviously uses, you can see both sides of the coin. Or you can just probably wrap them in tissue or anything like that, but it's probably best to keep the coins separated so they don't scratch each other. Anyway, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid, and that's been a top tip for the Mine Lab Show. Well, look, thanks again for uh, that bit of info there, uh, Mr. Coffee Bush. Uh, we're going to move straight into more coin and treasure discoveries now. And first up, we've got a viewer entry from Brett who writes that he found a unique gold ring in the bush near his house along with his son using a Equinox 800. I'm not sure I quite got that word of right. I don't think he found his son. I think he was with his son when he found the uh, unique gold ring. Um, now, look, this was uh, a very good entry, and thank you for that, Brett. That's uh, a nice gold ring you've got there. We'll be sending you a $25 minus 10 gift voucher for your efforts. And in another coin and treasure discovery, Jacob and Emma had just moved to Australia when they decided to spend the day detecting at a beach in Balmoral in New South Wales. After finding a few bits of lead, they heard a faint signal and decided to dig it. They found a silver thrippet about 55 centimetres down. Well, that kicked off one, one well, that kicked off the mother of all detecting days at the beach. Jacob and Emma found themselves a total of 47 coins ranging from 1920 through to 1960. Among the finds were a ram's head shilling, 
two florins and even an Edward VII penny. Apparently plenty of detectorists get down to Balmoral Beach and Jacob and Emma only expected to find modern coins. How wrong they were. This is a great story guys and if you'd like to know more follow the links in the feed. Now look, don't forget if you've got an interesting coin and treasure story head over to our website share it with us and you could win a $25 Miner's Den gift voucher. Okay, it's uh, time now to have a look at this week's uh, product spotlight. So when I was prospecting in uh, late September in the Pilbara area of Western Australia, one of the most used parts or one of the most used bits of equipment that uh, we took with us was our snake guards. These were invaluable and they were used at uh, all times when we were out prospecting. On the clip you saw this evening, we actually uh, had a snake uh, right near where we were uh, filming uh, and it uh, slid past uh, young Nathan. Uh, luckily it must have seen those snake guards and uh, decided it wasn't worth coming to take a chunk of him. But we did have it where um, uh, in the snake guards, there is actually in those snake guards some plastic inserts as well. So during that time when we were out there in the west, there was approximately six snakes that were spotted and I bet there was many more that we didn't see. The snake guards have been designed to give you good protection against being bitten when they are worn correctly. They're one size fits all uh, and they protect the shins and ankles. Easy to fit and adjust and comfortable to wear. They contain, as I said, plastic inserts for uh, added protection through here. So you haven't just got the uh, tough fabric and stuff that's around there. You've got this uh, plastic insert that's broken down and nice and comfortable all the way down through here. This bit actually fans out over the bottom of your foot there. As I said, the, it one size fits all and they are a great uh, thing for this type of uh, weather. Now look, what we've done is we've coupled these with our premium snake bite kit. Now you won't see this because it's green. That's the premium snake bite kit. It's had it sitting behind there. Um, and uh, that offers you the best chance with the snake guards as well as having the added security of a, of a smart compression bandage if you do receive a bite. So the bandage has uh, guides on it that shows you how far you need to stretch the bandage uh, for correct compression. Um, the snake bite kit contains all the necessary items to mitigate the chances of dying from a bite. Stay tuned on the next couple of episodes as we look further into snakes, snake guards and snake bite kits. Um, don't forget we have our limited offer on with the snake guards and with the snake bite kits uh, and that'll be on special for, well, till the end of the month at least anyway. There'll be links in the feeds uh, for you to uh, purchase one of those. Now look, uh, we're going to go and uh, have another look at what the Coffee Bush Kid's been up to in an episode of What Have I Found with himself and Treasure Tim. Let's have a look at that video now. G'day folks, I'm the Coffee Bush Kid. And I'm Treasure Tim. And today in what we have found, or what have I found, Tim's brought in a couple of other pieces from his mega collection and uh, we're going to have a look at, at what these are. So Tim, you want to tell us about them? So, Coffee Bush, yep. what I've brought in today is two pieces, yeah. which are nothing alike. No, they're not, are they? <laughs> no, they're definitely not. One's solid iron and one's brass. Yeah. So, the story is, yep. I was detecting in an 1860s mountain hut site up in the high country of Victoria, and I, was, I got a signal with my CTX 3030 that I could tell was a mixture of both non-ferrous and ferrous. It was a very messy signal. Grunty sort of tag. Grunty, yeah. noisy, messy, not clean. So, I thought, well, I'm just gonna dig it anyway because I, I just, by the sound of it, I believe there could be non-ferrous in there. Isn't it funny how sometimes you can get a target that just gives that hint of, mm, I think there might be something good in there. Yes, and with experience, yeah, yep, exactly. you've got to dig a few bad ones, but eventually one in 50 will be <laughs> something good with a messy signal. In this case, I the signal I was receiving, the non-ferrous signal, happened to be this some kind of sweetheart brooch photo locket kind of thing yep. with a horse head on it yep. and a horseshoe. It does open up, but I won't open it up. Uh, but inside you can see the little round holder for the black and white photograph. Yep, sometimes they actually also used to put lockets of hair in there as well. Mm. Well, we don't know what it is because no. uh, it's definitely gone. Yeah. Uh, now, this happened to be 
the noisy interfering signal oh, that's cool. in the same hole. So I w it wasn't until I was about 10 inches into the hole that all of a sudden the signal cleaned up to a perfectly clear non-ferrous uh, target signal. Yep. Once I'd found that, I thought, wow, that's a cool find. Looked at the spoils pile, and here we found some kind of small gun. Very, very small. Yep, looks and like a personal protection -y type thing. Absolutely. 1850s or 60s, perhaps a, a muff pistol or a Derringer kind of pistol. Yep. But uh, sometimes it really pays to dig those iffy signals. Y yeah, you really do have to. So there we go. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, a gun which normally I wouldn't have found on its own because uh, with a discrimination pattern that I use on the CTX, that doesn't give a signal at all, just yeah. discriminates out. So had it not been for that there, I wouldn't have found the pistol. That's cool. Cool story, isn't it? Yep. There you go. Well, that is an absolute brilliant story. So thanks for bringing those in. No um, worries. But yeah, it certainly pays. You have to get the experience of digging iffy signals to find out whether you, in the future you should or in the future if you've got something that just sounds different that you've just got to dig it. And obviously with this one, it certainly paid off. You've got a bloody great story and two great finds. Absolutely. That's brilliant. Well, I'm the Coffee Bush Kit. And I'm Treasure Tim. And that's what we've found for the Mine Lab Show. All right, well, another uh, interesting uh, what have I found there from Treasure Tim and the Coffee Bush Kid. Look, it's that time uh, of the show when I get to answer your questions. And tonight, the first one comes from Clayton, who asks, why didn't MindLab just do a software upgrade for the NOC 600 and 800, rather than releasing the NOC 7 and 900? Look, hi Clayton, this is a question that I get asked by a lot of people, and it's a very easy question to uh, to deal with. Firstly, MindLab's technology is cutting edge and as they develop new machines for us to uncover coins and relics and gold, they need to upgrade the hardware to enable it to uh, run the new technology. It's no different to your computer or to your smartphone. As tech progresses, faster processors and new functions require updated hardware to uh, run correctly. With the Knox range, MindLab have added some new features to the hardware this time, such as the vibrating handle, there's better waterproofing with it now having added depth capacity to go down to uh, up to five metres in the water. It has a flashlight uh, for a little bit of uh, low light conditions detecting and it has a red LED backlit screen as well as some improvements on the shaft to make it more compact and smaller. So as well as that, there's, always, uh, uh, there's also several software enhancements on the new series as well. Hope that answers your question there, Clayton. And next one, we have a question from Adrian who asks, why, where does the Manicor come in to finding gold when compared with the Gold Monster or the SDC 2300? The Manticore, it's, uh, so far, seems as though it sits above the Gold Monster in its ability to sniff out small gold nuggets in mineralised ground. It's not going to be as good as the SDC on, on gold, uh, depth-wise, and the SDC will still be better in the hot or highly mineralised ground, uh, giving you less false signalling. Its uh, manacor looks like it's really become much better all-rounder as opposed to an Equinox for those who want to do a bit of both treasure hunting and gold prospecting. And uh, as usual, my lab have led the pack with this new technology. Now look, we're still learning more about this unit and how it performs in the gold fields, and we'll be back with a feature presentation on its abilities in a future episode of the Mine Lab Show. Now look, if you've got a question, then you simply need to pop it into the feed or on our weekly post asking for your questions. I will give you an answer with the correct information live on a future episode of the Mine Lab Show. So, it's time now for us to find out who this week's winners are for tonight's lucky live viewer giveaway. So, I've got three each of the uh, snake bite kits, which again, we can't, oh, they're up on the screen, which makes it a little easier for me there. Uh, these three snake bite kits, firstly, I've got uh, on Facebook Michael Tooth, or Tooth, uh, Jackie Petterman, and uh, Jackie Hillcott, Hillcoat. Congratulations guys, you've all scored yourself a kit there on YouTube. We've got Stephen Mayo, Matt Stanley, or Stanley, and Lee Hodgson. 
So congratulations, guys. If I've read your name out there, Corey, I'll put the names up in the feed. If I've read your name out, just hit Corey up with a PM or a DM. Let him know your details, and you can pick those up from our stores uh, in the Eastern States if you want to, or we can post them out to you once we know your addresses and where to send them. Now, look, uh, thanks, uh, everybody, for tuning in to tonight's show. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode. So let's uh, move right along. Uh, and remember, all you have to do is comment during the feed and that puts you in with a chance to be the lucky live viewer. Okay, look, before I sign off, let's have a look at what's coming up next week on episode 112 of the Mind Lab Show. I'll keep you up to date on all the latest news, offers and products. The Coffee Bush Kid will be back to show us what he's found. Beachy Bruce will show us how to set up a coin, gold coin program on the Knox 900 and as always I'll answer your questions live and much much more. I'm Gold Digger Dave, thank you for watching the Mind Lab Show. Thanks for watching, remember like, subscribe and share. Tune in next week for another episode of the Mind Lab Show.